So we're now going to look at a number of applications of derivatives beyond simply sketching the graphs of functions, right? Which by now we've got a pretty good handle on. The first one we're going to look at is related rates. Okay? Um, now related rates are one of a, a couple of types of problems we'll encounter that fall under this kind of general category of, of story problems, right? word problems. And anytime you're, you're dealing with word problems, there's again sort of a There's a checklist that you have to go through, right? There, there are a number of steps to make sure that you're solving these related rates problems correctly, right? Because it's not simply a question of taking the derivative, right? At this point, we know how to take the derivative. Taking the derivative is the easy part. It's getting things set up, getting to the point where we can take that derivative uh, that's going to be the challenge. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to identify all quantities that are involved. Okay, um, so these rates problems, these are, these have to do with, with how the rate at which one quantity is changing affects the rate at which another quantity is changing, right? We know that derivatives give us information about rates of change. Uh, but we might have something like a simple problem that we might look at is, is even something like a circle, right? So let's say you, you have a, a circle and the radius is changing. How does the rate at which the radius is changing affect the rate at which, let's say, the circumference is changing or the rate at which the area is changing, right? Um, but we know how to, how to establish relationships between these quantities and then we can use calculus to establish relationships between the rates, right? Um, now, one of the things that usually helps with identifying these quantities is to draw a diagram, okay? Um, in these word problems, we can't overestimate how useful it is to have a diagram, just to write down the quantities, right? Because um, you have to identify them. And the other thing you need to do is you not, not just identify the quantities, right? You got to figure out what, what things you're dealing with, right? But you also need to label them, right? You need to give them names. You need to give them variable names if necessary, okay? Now, the next thing you need to do is determine which quantities are changing, all right? So, in a given problem, you might be, there might be all sorts of different quantities and values and numbers that are thrown at you. And some of these might be variable, right? And they might need to be assigned variable names. You might need to give them a label. Others might be constants. Um, others might be completely irrelevant to the problem, right? So we also need to know which things are relevant, right? It, it's entirely possible that you know, a more challenging question might give you more information that you need, and it's your job to figure out what information is actually relevant to the problem, right? Once you've, uh, once you've identified these quantities, you've figured out which ones are changing, which ones are relevant, the next thing you need is you need to establish a relationship. Um, between the quantities that are involved, okay? And sometimes this relationship comes from geometry. It might come from something like the formula for the area of a circle or the Pythagorean theorem or similar triangles or something like this. Um, <coughs> other times it might be coming from, from physics or chemistry or something like this, but there's generally some sort of equation, right? And, and by relationship, right, we really mean what we really mean here is an equation, right? We gotta figure out that equation, right? That's, that's often the hard part, is setting up that equation. Um, once you've got that equation set up, um, well, the rest is going to be calculus. Well, calculus and maybe a little bit of algebra, right? But the rest of it is math that we know how to do, okay? 
So that's the idea. Uh, one word of warning before we continue and jump into some of the examples. Um, the primary calculus tool that we're going to be using when we do related rates problems is implicit differentiation. So if you're a little bit rusty on your implicit differentiation, you might want to go back now, uh, review how that works, okay? Because we're going to be dealing with a lot of problems where we might not just have an X and a Y. We might have three or more variables involved, and we need to, and they might all depend on, well, typically they all depend on time, right? We're, we're thinking of rates of change, change with respect to time. Um, so you might have three or four variables that all depend on time, and you're doing implicit differentiation with respect to time. Um, and so you need to be comfortable with doing those operations. Uh, but as long as you're comfortable with that, um, and you're careful, and you can tell the difference between variables and constants, you should be able to sort out most of these problems. Uh, we'll look at a few examples um, to give you an idea of how this works. 